Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a drawn line type effect in Illustrator. Now you may want to do this effect when you want to apply a brush to a piece of text because you can't do it to regular text. It's just not going to look good. You might also use it when you're, for example, foiling using a cutting machine because for those kinds of effects, for those sorts of foil effects, you're going to need a single line, not a filled shape to be working with. So that's why you might be interested in creating this effect. Before we begin, I have more Illustrator training at Skillshare.com and so when you sign up for Skillshare, you'll get access to thousands of classes there, including over 250 of mine. In the description below is a Skillshare coupon for you, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer and typically mine will be better. I also have Illustrator training at udemy.com and there's a referral link for every one of those courses in the description below. Please feel free to share these with family, friends and co-workers. Let's swing back to Illustrator. I'm going to create a new document. Mine's just screen size. It doesn't really matter how big yours is. I'm going to type my word. So I'm just clicking in the document and I'm going to type my word. I'm using lowercase letters. It looks better with that. You get a lot better of a result with lowercase letters because you can get the sort of sweeping curves and difference in size in the letters. Now, Obviously this font is not particularly good. I'm going to select the type tool and let's go and find another font. Now one of the fonts that I really like is this font called Channel Slanted. The problem with this is that the letter M is going to be a bit funky when we actually reduce it to just a single line. You can see this loopy bit is not really reminiscent of a letter M. It looks good as a filled character, but it's not going to look particularly good as a line. There's going to be some confusion between this E and this looks a bit too much like an E. So I would either create a different word for the project or I'd find a better font to use. This is a better font here. The letter M is looking a lot better in this font. So you will need to sort of analyze what it is you've got in front of you before you actually go to the trouble of creating the letters. So you want a letter form that you like, but also one that's going to be recognizable by the time it's reduced to a single line rather than a filled shape. So once you've got your design, the font that you're going to use, you're going to select your type and reverse the fill and stroke because what we want to see is the outlines. And what we're going to do is draw on the inside. So let's go to the Layers palette. I'm opening up this layer and I'm going to lock down the type. So the type's not going to move. That's going to make it a little bit easier for me when I start drawing. To draw, I'm going to use the Pencil tool. It's a pretty easy tool to use. It sits underneath the Shaper tool. Select the Pencil tool, double click on it because you're going to need to make some setting changes. Make sure that you've got it set to pretty much smooth so that you will smooth out any wiggles as you draw and you're going to get much nicer lines. I'm also going to disable Keep Selected. That's going to make it a little bit easier for me to work at this point. So that's all I need. Click OK. I'm going to zoom in so I can see the letter I'm working on. So let's just zoom into this beginning bit. At this point, you could change your stroke color to a different color so that you can see things more clearly. I'm also going to increase my stroke weight so I can see what I'm doing and you can see what I'm doing. Let's go to the pencil tool. What we're going to do is draw this letter D. So we need to work out how we're going to draw it. I think I'm going to come down here, loop up here towards the end. So let's just aim for the middle of these two lines. Because we've got smoothing turned on, you can see that Illustrator is smoothing out that line as we go. You can also see that the line is no longer selected. That's why we turned Keep Selected off. So I'm going to do this one letter at a time and I'm going to pretty much where I can start the next letter where I finished off the last one. Basically what you're doing is using the letters as a guide. Now obviously this is looking pretty awful. I'll fix that up in a minute. If you make a really bad job of this, then just undo the letter with Control or Command Z and just go and do it again. At this point, if you're happy to do so, you could just hide your original text and have a good look at what you've got here. Well, I wanted to smooth this end out here, so I'm going to the Selection tool. I'm going to select over my character R. I'm also going to the Pencil tool. I'm going to double click on it and this time I am going to enable Keep Selected. 
because this means that I can reshape this curve and if I don't like it, it's still going to be selected so I can go and reshape it again. Now if a problem that you've got is just a sort of wonky line rather than needing to be redrawn, it's just not really as smooth as you like, select over it and go to the Smooth tool and with the Smooth tool you can just smooth things out a little bit. You can then join things up and this would be important for things like using this with a cutting machine. So what I'm going to do is join these two bits up here. So I'll select over both of them. I'll use the Pencil tool and just draw in this join. I'm going to join this together too. The E and the A aren't going to join together properly. I'm going to just clop that off in just a minute, but this A and M will join up. Once you've neatened up your type, you can then go and do whatever it is that you want to do with your type. So if you need to use this with your cutter, then you'll save it as you're used to saving the files for your cutter. What I'm going to do is apply a brush to my type. So I'm going to select over it and I'm going to the brushes panel to find a brush. I'm going to look in the artistic brushes and in the artistic paint brushes. These are brushes that are actually shipped with Illustrator. Now you're going to get better results with a brush that is sort of consistent all the way across the brush stroke. This one will be a problem because you're going to miss a bit in the middle of your letter. So you could try brush strokes like this one for example and it's worked pretty well. This one will probably work, oh it's really really thick so I'm not sure I like that so much. Let's try this one. So you can give your text a sort of hand-drawn look. You've got these nice loopy letters and you've got a brush applied to it. You could also do things such as use the neon graphic styles. So if you go into the graphic styles panel and open up the library, there are some neon effects here. And so you could apply a neon effect to your type and that would look good on a black background. And there are of course other styles that you can use. Just be aware that the type effects themselves probably won't work because we've actually got a sort of single line object here. So I don't expect the type effects to work perhaps as well as some of the other styles might. And certainly the neon style works particularly well for this kind of text. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video and learnt things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.